Across the United States, almost 20,000 migrant children are being held in detention camps after entering the country illegally, many of them having travelled alone from Central America. Their families hoped they'd be able to begin a new life, but a BBC team has heard accounts from children of being neglected and held in cold and filthy conditions. Hilary Anderson's report begins on America's southern border. Midnight on the Rio Grande. Smugglers ferry migrants across to the land they've dreamed of. But this is a night of fear. Many of the adults will be deported in the morning. There are children here too, traveling alone. Most of them will stay. Jordi has fled violent gangs in Guatemala. Tonight he has a new dread, America's camps for migrant children. This is Donna, Texas. These tents held almost 4,000 children earlier this spring. These, the notorious cubicles the migrants call ice boxes. Journalists haven't been allowed to speak to children inside to tell their stories. But we've tracked down children who've been released. She's here. Ariani, 10 years old, was about to see her mother for the first time Are since she was four after a harrowing ordeal this a few weeks ago. She says that they're not sure because they can't recognize her, but it is her. Ariani fled violence in Honduras, then spent weeks in Donna. Sí. To Paula, 16 years old, who was in the same camp, it was a child jail. Lights were on all night, children cried incessantly and were left filthy. Yo después dormí al lado de, de unas niñas, entonces yo a ellas les miré que tenían revisar la cabeza, unas personas que estaban ahí y me dijeron que sí, que sí, tenía viejos. Now a mass movement of children is underway. We obtained flight logs. Here children are about to be flown to a set of new and secretive detention sites around the country. Cindy was transported out of Donna with 40 girls, all sick with COVID. Durante la noche, volamos. También a nosotros nos iban a matar para que no nos quedáramos acá. Cindy was flown 1,500 miles away to a new detention site in California. There were 14 new facilities set up to reduce overcrowding. We set out to find them. This is a camp with the capacity for 10,000 children in El Paso, Texas. We've been told hundreds of children are being isolated in tents for COVID, scabies and lice. And there's at least one allegation of sexual abuse. An official document indicates children under six may be sent here. In the heart of downtown Dallas, we'd heard that hundreds of teenage boys were being held here in the convention center. We asked for access, but no. Staff have to sign agreements that they won't talk about what goes on inside. So they've asked us to leave the premises. They don't want anyone filming anything around this place. And no one will give us any reasons for the secrecy. Uh, the, the cots are very close to each other. This man who worked inside spoke to us on the condition of anonymity. So the boys have been in there for 45 days straight without any sunlight. They go to bed hungry. It's freezing cold. No recreational time outside, none of that. No fresh air, no nothing. How do the boys cope with that? How can they cope? You know, like they're all depressed. I heard the other day that several were contemplating suicide because of the conditions here. This a rare glimpse inside was secretly shot and given to us. Children spend on average a month in the new facilities. Responding to the allegations of neglect, the government told the BBC that the children have access to nutritious food, recreation, and are being kept in a healthy environment. Ariani drew pictures in detention of love hearts and flowers to fight off her sadness. 
Many nights now, she wakes up screaming. Ariani, once bubbly, has become withdrawn. Like thousands, she may bear scars of her detention for life. Hilary Anderson, BBC News.